Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. I'm a double Dutch, but my delight is such. I feel as if my lips in water be one for me. And if I had a flag, I'd hang me flag out. Hard at work in his Paris studio. The pen of Ronald Searle rounds out the title drawings for the first musical version of Charles Dickens' immortal classic, A Christmas Carol. Titled Scrooge, this new motion picture stars Albert Finney in the leading role. As an internationally acclaimed artist, Mr. Searle has illustrated much of Dickens' work, including an edition of A Christmas Carol. You know, I'm probably the thousandth artist in 127 years to try and uh, tackle this losing battle. Uh, the battle of trying to match uh, Dickens' fireworks of words with illustration. Dickens is a man who literally, with words, can conjure up a, a more vivid picture than most artists can conjure up in, with their pens. We can take, for example, uh, Scrooge, the character of Scrooge. Even John Leach, who illustrated the original version in 1843, finally produced a rather wishy-washy character who was hardly uh, an extension of the words that Dickens uh, wrote. But apart from the character of Scrooge, people have tried to bring to life the others. Cratchit, Tiny Tim, one, or, or almost a commercial uh, advertisement for soap. Everyone happy, everyone round, everyone clean and everyone gay. Missing perhaps the depth of Dickens, Arthur Rackham. There's a certain amount of atmosphere of Dickens, but not, not what Dickens suggested in his, in his descriptions. Of course, the genius of Dickens was the genius of words. He was an artist in words, and that's why he's always excited artists to try and match in drawing what he did with words. But there is a limitation to what you can do with two dimensions on a piece of paper. And that's why here in London it is exciting to see exactly what can be done bringing Dickens to life in three dimensions. December the 20th, December the 20th, the year is all the year. December the 20th, the Under the hand of celebrated English director Ronald Mead, the immortal words of Dickens are brought to life and music as a major motion picture. In a dress rehearsal, he puts the final touches on an exuberant musical number. Scrooge, who is watching it as all, must never think for one second that you are not absolutely genuine in your enthusiasm for him. You follow me? The moment that he, you do that, the moment he, he says, uh, what was it you said then? Uh, Which one? Uh, we're, we're all deeply, deeply moved. moved. Uh, I must believe you must put it on as though you are, not deride it. Mm, we're all deeply moved. Indeed we are deeply yeah. moved. Right? Yeah. On a full-scale reconstruction of a street in Dickensian yeah. London, yeah. Albert yeah. Finney is rehearsed in his lines yeah. by director yeah. Neen. Yes, that's right. Imagine a bit of applause and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And then... When you... I mean, is it yeah. after you've stopped? After I've you stopped. You want like me looking around at the people or yes, the Yes, a brief uh, looking look around at the, the people. people. Is this the future? Is this the future? <laughs> yes. And I mean, and it's a splendid future. It's yeah. astonishing. You yeah. never expected it. Yeah. Working with his director, and from his own acting experience, Finney rose to the challenge of recreating the classic miser, right. Ebenezer Scrooge. The British star found added inspiration for the character of Scrooge in the vivid lines of Dickens. Dickens is such a theatrical writer. I think you'll find all the guides that you need. I mean, there's a phrase in the book like, he carried his own cold about within him. So he didn't feel cold on the streets. He, in his isolation, he didn't ever shiver because of his cold heart. Seen on Christmas Eve for the first time by old Scrooge is Tiny Tim, one of Dickens' most beloved characters. On this beautiful winter's morning, 
If my wish could come true somehow. Dickens talks about his ferret eyes. That gave me the clue to screwing the eyes up. The apparent short-sightedness and these eyes swiveling about inside to suggest that behind the kind of face and the mask there's the, a very sharp brain. His eyes dart about continually looking for where he can make a few shillings or to see if somebody's trying to take him on. Finney takes the dual role of Scrooge as an old man and as a young charmer, spanning 35 years with the ease of a seasoned actor. They say happiness is the folly of fools. Pity for me, one of the fools. I've tried to make him fairly strongish, although he's, he's getting on a bit, but he's kind of fighting the age. He's not a, uh, let's say, decrepit old man. He's a rather tough old man. As Jacob Marley's ghost, Sir Alec Guinness appears before Scrooge, wrapped in chains and clanking irons. You don't believe in me, do you? No, I don't. Why do you doubt the evidence of your own eyes? Because I have had a slight stomach disorder. It has undoubtedly affected my vision. You're an hallucination. Probably brought on by uh, an undigested bit of beef. And a proper mustard. And a pound of cheese. And a little potato. That's it. There. there. That'll be fine. Then we get, we'll get, because he's, he's a better... One of the most critical phases of movie making is never seen by the public. For long hours after shooting is completed, director Neem guides film editor Peter Weatherly through the difficult and delicate task of blending together hundreds of scenes into a finished film. camera's still panning with him. Last. make a nasty mm. Well, uh, can we, uh, on the next line. On the next line we can. Go around then, yeah. Can we? Mm. All right, run on to the next line. And Yes. Sit down. Of course I can sit down. Slowly, Scrooge moves toward completion. From this tiny image to the Panavision screen and a worldwide movie-going audience. Here we go. Great night. My friends, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I remember this moment until my dying day. Brought by the ghost of Christmas future, an invisible Scrooge stands before his own funeral. From a throng of over-enthusiastic mourners, actor Anton Rogers emerges to lead them down the street in song and dance. On behalf of all the people who have assembled here, I would merely like to mention, if I may, that our unanimous attitude is one of lasting gratitude for what our friend has done for us today. And therefore, I would simply Thank you very much, thank you very much That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me I make a double dutch, but my delight is such I feel as if a little would be one for me And if I had a flag, I'd hang me flag out To add a sort of final or victory touch so let me flag out home, I'll simply have to say Thank you very, very, very much Thank you very, very, very much Thank you very much Thank you very much And that's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me It sounds a bit bizarre, but things the way they are I feel as if another life's begun for me. 
Dickens was an artist in words. And that's why ever since he wrote Christmas Carol in 1843, artists have been inspired to bring to life the characters in drawing as he brought them to life in words. And that's why it's exciting to be here in London during the filming of this picture and be able to draw the characters they stand in front of you as if you were living in the time of Dickens. I feel a bit devilish in the sun for me And if I had a drum, I'd have to bang it You had a soul